good morning. Um, this is uh, House Ways and Means, and it is September 22nd, Tuesday, and we hope it is the last week of the session. That's certainly my hope. Um, we are um, going to start our morning um, with uh, information from uh, Graham and from Abby on uh, the various tax um, provisions that were dropped into the budget, um, actually quite a number of them. And I wanted to get the committee briefed on what those were. And then we will talk about a plan um, to take those items out of the budget. Um, and the, what I anticipate doing this morning is um, making a decision about um, changes that we would make to the miscellaneous tax bill, which is currently on the calendar. Robin and I have talked some about um, a proposal that she's going to put on the table um, that will hopefully move us forward. So that's um, that's our plan for this morning. Um, and um, but I wanted to start just with information about what's in the tax bill, so that people know sort of what. Um, has uh, what's in front of us. Um, so pretty, un it's not unheard of, but it's unusual to have tax policy in the, in the budget. My, um, my view is that that is a mistake and it's a, a risky road to go down. Um, at some point, the budget will be the only bill that matters in the legislature. And I think that would be a, a problem, frankly, for, um, for the institution. So, um, so we will start, Abby, and well, let me ask the committee if anybody has any announcements before we start. Don't see anything. People a minute. Um, so Graham and Abby, I don't know which of you wants to begin. So I'll let you um, maybe, maybe let's, Abby, you're, you're well, you're both on. Okay, so which, which of you would want to start? Maybe Abby, just in terms of the language that's in there. Sure, great. So for the record, Abby Shepard, Office of Legislative Council. Um, what was put in here was taken out of the miscellaneous tax bill. Some of the provisions that you have seen um, and that are were on the calendar last week. So there there is the TIF language. There are the two sections that extend the debt and currents period. Um, there are also the provisions there are two sections for the VHIP, the VSAC changes, both what was voted initially out of the House um, relating to the tax credit, also the um, what came in from the Senate, which is the financial advisor sponsored 529 plans. Um, that's all in the budget um, as it's in the House right now. What um, was also amended on the Senate floor and added to this that was from the miscellaneous tax bill um, are the annual link up sections and those effective dates, as well as one provision that was uh, recommended by the Department of Taxes relating to the COVID-19 pandemic, which is for tax year 2016 refund requests, because there's a statute of limitations uh, in there that would require requests as of April 15th, but because of the federal extension, it didn't apply to requests for refunds in Vermont. So that, um, extension is added into the budget. So anyone now, although the, the time period is passed, it would have been by July 15th, um, the Department of Taxes and I believe some senators were testifying that there have been uh, taxpayers who have specifically asked for this, who are concerned about this passing, which is why they decided to make sure that it was included in the budget. So those are, and then, um, Yes, so that's all of those provisions and I could, could show you that language if you wished. And then I also have um, other language for Rep Shy, whenever you're ready to hear about that. Okay, um, Graham, uh, anything to add on that? Um, just one thing, I, I'm trying to remember if this was in the House budget, but there is a provision in the Senate budget which adds a $1 increase in the downtown tax credit uh, cap. Um, and I'm imagining that's just a placeholder for, for potential expansion, but that is also in the Senate budget as well, in addition to what Abby had mentioned, but I do not have anything else to add in terms of um, what was added um, to the budget, um, the fiscal stuff, uh, fiscal information associated with the, these provisions the committee is, has seen before, so. There's somebody screaming. Is that yours, Graham? 
That's my toddler. Yes, we're having a tough morning here. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, so I want to just quickly talk about the downtown tax credits. So, um, if you remember, we ended up at a four hundred thousand dollar increase, two point six million to three million. Um, that didn't go in our miscellaneous tax bill. Um, it didn't go in because. I thought that it was in the budget. This was Kitty and me miscommunicating. Kitty said, we, we have the money in the budget and I'm thinking that means she has the language and she's assuming I have it in the miscellaneous tax bill. Long story, it ended up in the budget in the Senate. Um, to me, that is, I just got a note from Scott that he's having difficulties with the internet, but we'll be on soon. Um, the, um, the, the, change in the amount of the downtown tax credit to me is more like an appropriation, not a policy change. Um, we didn't change any of the parameters of the program. So I don't see that as doing tax policy in the budget, although that provision could have gone easily in miscellaneous tax or in the budget. It's ended up in the budget because it has a budget impact. It doesn't have a policy impact. Um, so that, that to me is a, a slightly different issue than putting um, things like the annual link up, the COVID refund requests, the VSEC language and the TIF language um, in the budget, which are clearly tax policy. So um, the, uh, uh, so we have the miscellaneous tax bill on the calendar um, and um, it's uh, obviously um, there are issues in there that are, um, uh, making it uh, problematic in terms of particularly our relationship with the Senate. Um, so Robin has um, uh, prepared uh, a possible substitute amendment um, that she is um, uh, going to introduce. I don't know if she's going to go through it or Abby's going to go through it, but, um, but that's what we're looking at this morning. And um, let me go ahead and let her do that. And then we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll have full committee discussion about what our next steps are. Um, and ultimately we'll have a vote even though we don't actually still have the bill. So we're gonna have to figure out how to move forward. Um, but that's just a procedural kind of question. We'll figure that one out. So Robin. Thanks, I'll just tee it up and then let Abby go through the uh, through, through the amendment. So um, what we did was to um, uh, basically take things back out of the budget that were in our miscellaneous tax bill um, and put them back in our miscellaneous tax bill. So the TIF language that was that the Senate put in the budget is back in the miscellaneous tax bill. We eliminated the um, pre-written software tax from this amendment that I'm proposing. So we have fewer controversial items at the end of the session. Um, we kept in the, all of the VSAC language that as, as we passed out of ways and means, but we took out the financial advisor piece because that, um, that was a separate piece. And then we kept in uh, the annual link ups and the tax year 2016 refund, if I have that right. So. Um, I think those are the big items and uh, maybe we'll have Abby go through the amendment, the proposed amendment. Right, and um, so the, the way they, so if, if, if depending on whether the committee endorses this particular path, um, the path that we're on is that we would um, uh, propose a, it wouldn't be from the committee, it would be from individuals um, because we don't have possession of the bill, but we would be proposing a substitute um, uh, amendment, a concur with amendment. So all the stuff that's in the Senate bill um, that, that was in our originally mis original miscellaneous tax bill um, as the Senate returned it to us would be included. And, and we'll take time just to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. So, um, so Abby, you go ahead and go through the language for us and um, we'll, before we actually vote on something, we'll be sure everybody understands what's in and what's out. Great. Okay, so as Rep Shai just mentioned, there are a few um, sort of larger pieces that are moving, but there are also a few um, smaller pieces that were in the committee for proposal of concurring with amendment. Those are again showing up here. So 
know, in the very first instance, there is this report from the Department of Taxes that is still included. And if Sorry, she'll scroll down. This is the February 1st deadline um, that again was put in the, the committee's proposal of amendment. So that has not changed. The second instance of amendment as we scroll down is also not changed from what the committee proposed. So it adds back the use tax safe harbor. And this is the language that was voted out of the house originally when the bill passed over. Um, and if you scroll down to the third instance of amendment, it's more of a, a technical cleanup because the paper bag exemption from sales tax um, was enacted in another bill. It's just being um, deleted from the, the bill as proposed by the Senate. Uh, the fourth instance of, of amendment deals with the VSAC changes. So it removes the financial advisor sponsored plans and adds back the language again that passed out of the house, which amends the 529 plan tax credit. Um, and it syncs up to a few different um, allowable distributions that are allowed at the federal level. Again, this is what was passed out of the house. The fifth instance, oh, and I'm sorry, in section 19A, the, where it says deleted, that takes out the financial advisor sponsored 529 plans because that was um, added by the Senate. And then the fifth instance of amendment, again, that's a little more technical, it's cleaning up the bill because the July 15th extension to August 15th deadline for uh, the official state revenue estimate, that deadline is passed, so it's, it's a moot point. Um, and section 27 is also deleted because the, um, it was amending in a, a, a technical issue where there was a, a section that was inadvertently repealed and that would have been effective July 1st. So it was again moot it, with the dating and the timing, it no longer works. So those two sections are removed from the bill. And lastly, the sixth instance of amendment um, strikes out the effective dates and adds in the TIF language. But again, this is the same language that was included in the committee proposal. So this extends, I believe by one year, um, the period for incurring debt in these uh, TIF districts. So we can scroll down, there are two sections that um, amend the deadline for incurring debt. And keep scrolling. And then the final, it's not a separate instance of amendment, but the last new section being added into the bill is section 31, which is the effective dates. So they're all being listed again because it no longer includes the um, sales tax exemption for paper bags as passed out of the Senate, and it no longer includes the pre-written computer software. So this is more of just a true up. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit further, you see there's the annual link up effective date. And then that's, those are all of the changes. All right, so let me see um, where people are, if there are questions for Abby or for Robin, or for anybody. Um, give me one minute. So the, the, the plan um, is that the budget will no longer include the tax policy changes um, and will move the miscellaneous tax bill um, along the lines of what Robin has proposed, assuming that the committee um, endorses that. Questions anyone has? Robin, do you want to make this a oh, pat? Um, go ahead. So, so just so I'm clear, totally clear on this, we, Robin is amending the budget as it came back from the Senate, or is she amending our miscellaneous tax bill? The miscellaneous tax bill. Okay. So, so we have an amendment on the calendar and yep. her motion will be to, I think what will happen is that she just won't offer the amendment that's on the calendar um, and instead she'll offer this. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it'll technically be a substitute that we have to vote on, vote to substitute. Um, 
because our amendment's never actually been offered, but that's a procedural thing that the speaker said she would work out with the house clerks so that we end up with a house vote on this proposal that Abby's just been through. Okay, and where, where who pulls the tax provisions out of the budget that came back from the Senate approves? Yes. And so that's a whole separate ball game. They have to, they're not concurring and whatever. Exactly. There are a number of other issues, many other issues that are, so I think, I think um, the discussion yesterday and actually it applies to this bill as well is do we go to a conference committee on the budget or is there a concur with an amendment on the budget? And um, I don't know that that has been settled. That was a discussion I had with the speaker yesterday about the miscellaneous tax bill as well as is would a better avenue uh, be a conference committee um, or a substitute concur with amendment. Um, and I think given the time frame, we felt that the concur with amendment would be a better way to go. But you know, that's this <clears throat> part of why we're sitting here sort of sitting yep. here together is to have that discussion. Okay, and one, one further, with, with Robin's amendment and pulling the cloud tax, which yep. I have issues with, yep. and uh, the rest of it, are there, I don't see any other actual raising of taxes anywhere in this bill, uh, serious. No, the use tax gives some tax back, the use change in the use tax table. Um, it's right. not, not a lot, but it's, um, oh, it's not nothing. It's about 750,000, I think, Graham, if I remember correctly. Um, and um, I don't, there's nothing else that I'm aware of unless I'm missing something. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't, okay, thanks. Okay, Robin. Thanks, actually, those were really helpful questions for us all to go over and for me too. So, um, just to also just say we're not we're not amending the amendment we passed we're replacing that old amendment with a new amendment so yeah so, so that amendment will um either be never offered um or we'll do a substitute for it so that we, right. we will not vote on the amendment that's on the floor right and at some point if this goes the way we think it may go somebody will tell me what i'm supposed to say <laughs> right yeah, okay. I don't I don't know what that is yet. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I, I what I want to do is um, before we finish with this this morning is get the committee on record on the substitute, um, and then the question would be: Do we add our names on a floor amendment, or does Robin offer it and explain that we've supported it or whatever? I mean, she's not going to offer it if we don't support it. So. Um, but that's, that's want, one of the practice in the committee. Do you want a motion then to uh, adopt a substitute? Uh, that would be probably a good time to do that. Yeah. Do, do, I, uh, point of order. Just, Robin? Um, do we see if we want more names on it before we admit, do I it? Or the first question is, does the committee endorse it? And then, okay. then we can have a second conversation about whether we add our names to it. Oh, thank you. I'll, go back. I'll move that we endorse it then, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, is there a second to that? Second. Okay, uh, moved and seconded that we endorse uh, the amendment that Robin has presented and with Abby's assistance. Um, is there more discussion? Is that Bill that was the second? I wasn't looking up. Yeah, I thought I heard your voice. Thank you. Uh, George. Yeah, I, I think I need to to say, although you've all heard it before, I'm very disappointed that the cloud tax is not here. And I'm very disappointed that the tampon tax removal is not here um, in our in our amendment. I, I think I understand uh, why that is, um, but still, um, I'm disappointed. Yeah, uh, Emily. I'm also disappointed about the pre-written software, but one of the nice things about the session going on forever is that I know that my next opportunity is so close at hand, just a couple months away. Um, I really 
like the idea of expanding the number of names on this, I think it's less confusing for folks on the floor if we do yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, anyone else want to weigh in? Um, has Joey been able to join us? Janet, like, yeah, like, Janet, yeah. I'm here. On, I'm I'm here on the phone. Okay, good. Um, did you get to hear the discussion, or, or do we need to update you before we vote? And, um, and I just maybe two sentences because I did, I would, was struggling okay. to get on. I'm sorry. Okay, and uh, same for you, Scott. I don't know how long you've been on. I know you've been trying to trying to connect. So um, <clears throat> the the headline, I guess, is that the um, Senate put several provisions out of our miscellaneous tax bill into the budget. We've had discussions. Um, with the budget conferees and the speaker about removing those sections from the budget. And what we're doing is um, uh, Robin has put a, a proposal. Um, it's basically a substitute concur with amendment um, on the table. And that's what we've had presented. And it would include um, uh, the TIF language, it does not include the, the financial advisor VSAC language, but it includes the, um, there's some other tax credit language that we had in our house pass bill on, bill on VSAC. It includes the annual link up and the um, <laughs> COVID refund requests and the use tax table. Um, what am okay. I next, Robin? Yeah. Um, so, so it would, um, what we would do is we wouldn't offer the amendment that's on the calendar, which includes the cloud tax. The substitute would uh, not include the cloud tax. I know some of us are disappointed in that. Oh, yes. Um, but um, oh. this is the world that we're in and we're trying to adjourn this week. So we're, um, uh, I guess, <clears throat> recognizing when we need to band. Um, and so the motion at the moment is for the committee to endorse the amendment that Robin has um, presented. And okay, thanks. So, Thank you for the update. I, I think I get the picture. Thank you. Uh, Scott has a question. Um, not a question, just a comment. I was able to log on shortly after you started, so I've, oh, I've heard everything, and okay. I know I understand everything. Um, and I echo George's sentiments. Um, yeah, but. Um, I can see you. I can see everything. I can hear. I, you just can't see me. Okay. We see the baseball field, so we know you're here. That's the important part, baseball. Right. Um, so we have a motion and a second, um, and I want to be sure everybody's questions are answered before we vote. So um, looking around again. I don't see any other Question. So the motion is to endorse the amendment that um, Robin has presented. Uh, it's been seconded. And if people are ready, Robin, would you call the roll? Um, just one quick question before I decide which column to put this in. Are we going to have another vote after this, or is this the vote? This is the vote. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Representative Anthony. Yes. Representative Beck. Yes. Representative Brennan. Representative Brennan is on mute. Yes. Thank you. Representative Donovan. Yes. Thank you. Representative Kornheiser. Yes. Representative Maslin. Yep. Representative Shy is a yes. Representative Till. Yes. Representative Young is not here. I don't think. Nope. Representative Canfield. Yes. Representative Ansel. Yes. 10-0-1. So then my question for the committee, um, is there anyone who does not want their name on this substitute amendment? Because um, ideally we would just put all the names on since we voted, um, but I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do that if somebody doesn't want their name on there. So we're all okay, some signal, George. Uh, I I just think we shouldn't put Sam's name on it without no. getting in touch with him. Exactly. His name won't go on. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So that's agreeable with everybody. Okay, good. Uh, so that's what we'll do. Robin, I'm going to list you first. Um, okay. And then the rest of us will do alphabetical. Um, 
and because you're the one who's going to offer it and we'll figure out the mechanics of offering it um, uh, soon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the house floor is going to be uh, a tough morning um, from what I understand. So this probably won't come up until the afternoon. Okay. That's good. Good. Great. <laughs> Rearrange my notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, I think we're on Ed Finance now and Mark. Is that right? Mark, are you with us or are you? There you are, you're just muted though. Okay, can you hear me now? We can, and okay. I see that Sam has joined us as well. Sam, we just did a vote on um, a substitute on the miscellaneous tax bill. Um, and I think rather than uh, stop now and, and briefing, everyone's heard my explanation three times now. So um, maybe what I'll do is, is we'll, that Robin or I will give you a call and let you know what we're doing. Um, and if you want to have your name added to the amendment, you can at that point. Okay, sounds good. Okay, um, Mark. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I, ha I had three things um, I wanted to touch on with you this morning. Um, one is the um, education policy provisions that the Senate's recommending and the difference between the House. And there's a couple of those you may be interested in because they're, they're sort of policy, but they're also sort of um, fiscal issues. Um, so in the, um, in the House um, version of the budget, there's a provision in there for setting the school year um, and for teacher endorsements. I don't know a lot about those, but those are just two provisions that came back. There was also a provision in there on allowing Australian ballots. The Senate um, sent that provision to the Gov GovOps, Senate GovOps, and they're, they're debating that this morning, but that was taken out, but um, it's likely to go. Um, other than those three things, the Senate then added four additional provisions that the House didn't have. Um, one of them dealt with ADM, and I'll come back to that. One dealt with the transportation formula, one dealt with pre-K endorsements, and one dealt with an after-school task force. The two that you're probably interested in are um, the ADM and transportation provisions. Um, the Senate adopted um, the ADM provision as recommended by the Secretary of Education, and that simply says that your ADM count for this year shall not be lower than it was last year. So if you're, if, if you're growing, you get to count the students. If you're shrinking, you get to maintain your ADM from the previous year. And we've talked about this before. It's, it's a zero sum game, but it'll get, the argument is that it'll provide some stability for districts that are losing kids this year due to homeschooling and other, other reasons. Uh, so Emily. Everybody? Yeah, Emily has a question. Um, I'm still not sure what's um, to be done with folks who are gaining significant numbers of students. I know that is happening in some districts. And so I appreciate um, that we're compensating for the drop, but I think we still haven't, um, we're down to the wire and we haven't found a solution for those folks. So if, 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 you're, if you're an operating district and you're gaining kids, you're gonna get to count those kids in your ADM count. If you're a non-operating district, you're right. Those kids could come in and create an additional cost for the, for the district. Um, one possibility that's been suggested there is that those districts may be eligible to apply for a CRF um, reimbursement for costs of kids who have come into the district from New York and Massachusetts as a result of wanting to relocate because of the coronavirus. But um, other than that, right now, there's no provision to address that. Um, under current law, if they ran a deficit or had to borrow, that money would carry forward into FY23, and they would then be able to um, have their tax rate calculated based on, you know, the additional kids they're sending out. So, um, other than that, is there CRF funding available? I mean, I appreciate the um, magic of making that logically possible, yeah. but. Yeah. Um, is there I'll, I'll go over that in a minute, but there, there is CRF money that the Senate added a significant amount of um, mm -hmm. money for K through 12 out of the state CRF allocation. Okay, the, the one other provision um, on the policy bill that you might be interested in is the Senate added um, some language that would allow districts to use to, to apply for CRF funding if they had transportation costs related to providing meals and those kind of things, and they weren't reimbursed um, with CRF funds. If they have the cost 
and the costs not reimbursed by CRF funds, then they could add that to the transportation um, aid, the transportation aid that they would receive. Since that lags a couple of years, it's not a fiscal 22 issue. It's it's beyond 22, but it's just a it's a safeguard that just make indicates to schools that if for some reason they weren't able to get CRF money for this, then they could add it to the transportation um, aid that they would get in, in future years. Is that something that's coming up in um, in particular districts, or is that system wide? I, I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't in Senate Education when they adopted it, but I, I could find out what the reason for it is. Curious. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Peter. Um, I like uh, Emily uh, had advanced an, a worry based on a letter I think we all got from a Wyndham County Supervisory District, and it was about an unanticipated increase in domiciled uh, students uh, who obviously deserve an education in from funded from the town of residence. In my case, I was worried uh, about the comment in that document in that letter, which essentially said, but this particular or one of the schools in this particular supervisory district does not run its own schools at tuitions. So that for every additional student, it has to write an additional check to whomever relationship essentially discharges the, uh, the obligation to educate those students. And I just, I just want to be sure everything that Mark said in terms of being able to account for that surprise also pertains to uh, towns that tuition their students as opposed to run their own schools. Thanks. Mark, did you get through the... Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the policy sure. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are the policy parts. Um, Sorsha, do you have the um, spreadsheet that um, Chloe sent to you yesterday? Uh, on yes, the CRF I'll, allocations? Yes, I'll pull that up. Okay. Okay, so there's something we're going to look at. Yeah, this is just a, this is a, um, this is not my sheet, so I, I may be a little bit slower than the normal working you through this, but... Um, this is a, a sheet that uh, attempts to show um, how the CRF allocations for K through 12 um, differ between the House and the Senate. So in the first column, Q1 budget, that's, that's the amounts that you approved um, earlier um, in this session, the $50 million. Um, when the House um, took this up more recently, you the House added $32.4 million, and that was based on the best information about costs reimbursable costs than we had at that time. Um, the Senate had better information and um, it became clear that schools were going to have more um, more CRF eligible costs that um, this money could be used for. So the Senate added about another $20 million um, to what the House um, has previously approved. So the Senate is up by $53 million compared to the um, House's 32.4. So that, that's basically the headline. Um, if you look at the individual line items, um, and it's a little bit confusing going on in here because the money's moving around a little bit, but um, on Efficiency Vermont, the House um, added $5 million to what you had previously appropriated. The Senate bumped that up. Mark, I'm, I'm gonna stop you because I lost you a little ways back and I'm, okay. I, I don't know if everyone else did, but I did. You said that the uh, you used the Senate figure, and then you referred to the House figure of 32.4, and I can't find the 32.4 on here. Um, it's the different, uh, if you look at the total line. I have um, to subtract to get it? Yes, so it's, it's 82.4. <laughs> okay. okay, well, that, you lost me. I'm, <laughs> looking for, I'm looking, trying to find my place, and I couldn't find I, it. I, I haven't have, listened to anything else she said. Okay. Um, Stop me anytime we go through this. I had a little bit of trouble with this sheet because the columns don't actually add up the way it's shown. Well, that, okay, so let's 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 go through it slowly so that we understand what it is. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Let's do it again. Let's sure. do it again because um, I know people will have questions about what's available. Okay. Okay. So in in the Q1 budget, which is what you already passed, yeah, you had basically six and a half million dollars for efficiency Vermont and another forty one million dollars yeah. available for K through twelve. Okay. Independent schools received a million and a half, and there was accounting and technical assistance for a million. So okay. you provided out of the out of the state CRF allocation, there was fifty million dollars. Yep. The House then took up the bill more recently, and because of the increase in the demand that we were able to identify, you increased the appropriation for Efficiency Vermont by five million dollars 
to 11.5. Okay. Yep. And the amount available to schools increased from 41 million to 68.4 million. Um, that's that is um, the increase for the amount of money that's available for um, basically K through 12 and independent schools and accounting and technical assistance. The confusion comes in on this sheet for me a little bit on the summer meals and the meals equipment. What happened there was that the $12 million that had been appropriated in the Q1 budget got out too late for the schools to be able to utilize it. So they actually only ended up using 2.2 million. We were then informed by AOE that even though they couldn't use the money for the purpose that you had initially appropriated it for, they could use $4 million for um, meal service equipment. So up to $4 million was carved out of that and made available. Okay. So those those two those two rows don't add up in the totals. They're sort of separated out, out to the side. Um, then um, you maintained the amount of money that was going to independent schools at one and a half million dollars, and you maintained the amount for uh, technical assistance at one million dollars. So overall, the increase was about thirty-two point four million dollars, and that's where it was left when you guys finished with it. And the 32.4 is the difference between 82.4 and 50. That was the yeah. part I missed. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. So then if you move over to the Senate column, oh, really? based on yeah. new information that was available when they had this bill, they added another $2 million on top of the $5 million that the House had added for um, HVAC mm -hmm. systems. Yeah. Um, Efficiency Vermont thinks they're going to be able to use up all that money within the time frame. There's probably a lot more demand than that out there, but um, projects might not be able to be finished by December 30th. So um, they have ESSER money and there's some other funds available that might be able to help with that in the future. Then um, for K through 12 schools, um, there's an additional, uh, they, they basically all together, it's an additional 88.3. They reduced the amount of money going to independent schools from a million and a half to 1.2. And that was based on the, the um, submissions that AOE has received, which added up to 1.17. So the Senate reduced that amount by $300,000. And they also eliminated the amount going to um, accounting and technical assistance because AOE indicated that it hadn't been used and it wasn't necessary. Okay. So for, um, for the total then it's 103 minus that 50, which means that the Senate added 53 million compared to the 32 point four that the house added. Um, so the amount available for, and one of the things we've been focusing on is how much is actually available for reimbursements for K through 12. That amount's broken out on this very bottom line, which indicates that there's $62.2 million available altogether for K through 12 reimbursements. And the Senate version is $82.1 million. And that's currently available um, has not gone out to schools at this point. Is that no, right? It has not gone out to schools yet. That's correct. So that could, that can bring if, if if everybody's okay on this, then that brings brings me to the last issue, which is yes. uh, the issue around the reimbursements. So, okay. So, um, the, the the state's CRF allocation um, going to K through twelve was intended to reimburse them for any CRF eligible costs. So there there are any COVID related costs that they are going to incur up until December 30th. Within that, within, the, within that pot of money that is CRF eligible spending, they basically break down into two types of costs. One type of cost is just the new cost that the districts are facing. They, they were never budgeted. There are new CRF costs for PPE or whatever they've spent it on. That's in one bucket. The other bucket is costs that they may have previously budgeted for. So if they were gonna get reimbursement from the CRF fund for those costs and they've already budgeted for it, they're essentially getting covered, they're having that cost covered twice. So the idea was that to the extent that districts identify those costs, that amount could be used to reduce the education payment this year and help reduce the $66 million deficit in the education fund. Mark, can you give a couple examples of what the, those costs might be? Um, they could be costs related. I mean, you might have had somebody on payroll that was doing a task that was no longer necessary once schools went remote. That person could have been you know, redirected to another task. So they're still receiving their pay. They were included in the budget initially, 
but now that person's salary may be eligible for a CRF reimbursement. If the district gets that reimbursement, they're up. So if they then had that amount reduced from their education payment, they're whole and the education fund would receive a benefit. The other costs are just new things that came up for PPE or you know the cost of reconfiguring classrooms or all those kinds of things that the districts could not have anticipated initially. Uh, and, and those costs um, would be you know, just submitted and, and reimbursed out of this fund. Now, the, the business managers took a look at this and they had, they had some problems with it. Uh, first of all, the total amount of money that had been appropriated by the house didn't look like it was gonna be sufficient to fully reimburse them for their CRF eligible costs. The Senate addressed that by adding the additional money, the additional $20 million um, out of the state's allocation for this purpose. The second thing they did was they said that to the extent that any of this recapture takes place through the education payment, it will only be done for previously budgeted costs. Now, if it had worked the other way and you had had a um, proration of new costs, the district would have expended say $100,000 for these new costs. If we came in and prorated that to say 80,000, the district would have been short $20,000. So the Senate said that they're not going to do any proration on new CRF eligible costs to the extent that any proration would happen, it would happen on the previously budgeted costs. And that means that if the district didn't get fully reimbursed for its previously budgeted costs, we, we, you'd only subtract the smaller amount from their ed payment. So they again would be held, held harmless. I'm seeing confusion. Everybody following. You sorry, Mark, can you do that again? I'm so sorry. No, it's, it's confusing. There's, there's a lot of moving parts. So say, say you had a previously budgeted expenditure for $100,000 and we were only able to reimburse you for $80,000 of that cost because there were insufficient funds. Then we would only reduce your education payment by the $80,000, not the full hundred because that, that, would, that would end up penalizing you, right? The, the, the idea was to make districts whole Yes. Um, but capture as much federal money for the education fund as we can. Yes. That, that, that's the framework that we're talking that, about. That's the framework. Um, and the, the additional language that the Senate added provides assurances that that will happen because it separated out the previously budgeted costs from the new costs. However. However, um, right, well, I don't actually know where, where we are right now. As of at least yesterday, um, the, um, we got some communications from Nathan Lavery who works with um, NASBO and he indicated that they, they were still a little bit uncertain as to whether they should actually submit their previously budgeted costs. And they wanted some kind of a guarantee that to the extent that any of these funds were clawed back by the federal government down the line, subsequent to audit, that they wouldn't be affected by that directly. Um, we had um, people in our office take a look at the federal guidelines we think that the that if if that were to happen, it's the state that's on the hook and not the not the not the school districts. So I'm not sure it's a valid concern. Um, but um, that's that's where things stood as of as, as of yesterday. Now, to the extent that school districts don't submit their previously budgeted cost for reimbursement, then there wouldn't be any ability to recapture any of that money through the education payment. Uh, Jim and Peter. Thanks. So, Mark, you've showed how we can free up 62 or 82 or whatever million for um, for for schools. Do we know that they can use that? Do they have a plan? Is that going to go out the door on time? Um, yeah, I think I think districts are going to be able to use all of the money that okay. the, that the Senate has appropriated for this purpose. Right, but again, right. I just want to make clear that it's not it's not the 62 million or the 82 million that comes off of the um, education fund deficit. It's only a portion of that money that was previously budgeted. So a lot of that money will go out to cover new costs and have no impact on the ed fund. Okay, very good. Thank you. And to go back to our concern, um, to the extent we can capture federal money for the education fund, we can keep property tax rates and other taxes as low as possible. To the extent we can't capture that money, we continue to have a significant pressure in the education fund. So, which is sort of our committee's interest in all this. I mean, other than the fact that we all 
represent schools. Um, Peter. Uh, just uh, to go back um, to the uh, budgeted that you intend to accommodate switching federal money for uh, ed fund money. I remember at least one set of guidelines which explicitly said uh, retasking someone who's already budgeted would not be eligible. Um, and maybe I'm confusing that set of guidelines with your discussion of the funds that you think are still eligible uh, to be uh, state funds that can be substituted uh, with federal funds. But I was a little worried about the already budgeted retasking kind of comment in light of what I think I read. This would be a couple, three months ago, unless the guidelines have changed. Is there some reassurance? Because as you say, it's a state risk uh, to, for the clawback. Yeah, I, I think if, if it wasn't CRF eligible, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be receiving any of the, any of the aid either way. So it, it has to be CRF eligible first. And then the question becomes then, it, was it previously budgeted or is it a new cost? So if, if it doesn't meet the initial threshold, then, then it's not gonna affect this. Other, uh, any other questions? So Mark, the, the um, if this is actually a problem and whether there is something that we can or should do it, about it, um, I, I can follow up later today with Nathan and find out where they were. Um, when we when we last met with them, they were going to send a letter to the appropriations committees, uh, making okay. a request that some additional language be added to the budget to provide this assurance. The problem with that is there are a lot of entities out there, nonprofits and all kinds of entities that are receiving CRF money. And if you open the door to um, this kind of language, it could it, it could be difficult to contain it. Um, and on top of that, again, um, the reading in our office, at least, is that um, it's the state, not the districts, that would be eligible for any disallowed um, use of the CRF money. So we're, we're thinking it's they're covered, and I think it's just a case of communicating that to them and okay. <laughs> finding out that they agree to that. Yeah. Jana, can I ask uh, Mark a question? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Mark, how do schools go around to access the um, HVAC money from Efficiency Vermont? Is that, um, is that and, and how did that figure get arrived at? Um, the, the, the Senate's figure, which was $2 million higher than what you had appropriated, was based on um, interest expressed by school districts to Efficiency Vermont. I think there were 300 schools that expressed interest in participating, and those... Okay. That, those that Efficiency Vermont thought would be able to get in under the December 30th wire um, would be covered with the 13.5 million. Okay. Um, other questions anyone has? Um, did you go, you went over the ADM language? Right. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just the language that you looked at earlier that was proposed yeah. by the Secretary of Administration. Yeah. So it's a simpler right. version of um, what you were looking at. But yeah. um, And that's temporary? Is that time limited or is that uh, indefinite? Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I dropped, dropped my thought. Um, what, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, is that, that's time, by its terms, it's time limited, right? What, what is? The ADM language. Oh, yes. It's, it's, just, it's just for this year. And the other thing to keep in mind is it's two-year average. So it only has a, ha it has a half of an impact in 22 yeah. and then another half in 23. So it's yeah. spread out. So it, 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 unless there's a small district that has a, you know, an unusual um, yeah. impact on the budget, it's not going to have that big an impact on people. And we have, and we haven't dealt with the ups that, that side, but, but yeah. Okay. Well, the, the the operating ups are taken care of. It's the non-operating ups. Yeah. Uh, Emily and George. Um, can you help me remember? We had a fund for town borrowing. Um, mm -hmm. that passed at some point in whatever time has become. Yeah. Um. Is that available for school districts to borrow from as well if they run into trouble? 
I'll have to check to be absolutely sure, but um, my recollection is that that fund wasn't tapped at all and the money's been reallocated. Okay. It doesn't exist, but I should, on the second, I know none of it was tapped. I'm, I'm not sure what the status of the reuse of it was. I, I know that that was the intent at one point. Yeah, that was something we built because people were anxious, rightly. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out they didn't need it. Um, that it makes sense. So things felt very uncertain at that period. I guess I'm worried that people yeah, are um, like about to be anxious again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in terms of timing, Mark, I, I'm. Uh, you can just help me sort of remember these things. Um, we've done fixes for the kinds the kind of situation that Wynn Hall is in, um, in the past, but if we have, we, we've done them in that school year, is that right? I, I guess my question is when we come back, um, it's, there's still time to respond to that when we have better information about it or, or not. Well, yeah, I mean, just you, you haven't, the, the yields and the tax rates aren't finally set until June 30th. So yeah. I think all, you always have the opportunity to make changes. Um, yeah. Once you come back in January, we've done them. I think we've done them for Winhall, if I remember correctly. Right. Um, towns, towns aren't really sure what their tax rate is going to be until after June yeah. 30th when they get notification right. from AOE, and the yeah. yield has changed in past years, right up until the last day yeah. of the session. So, I, mean, I realize that you know people are the anxiety level is higher generally because of the situation that schools are in. So that's a that's a um, where is that? may have been all right in another year it may not feel quite as all right right now and the fact that we're in session at the moment um it makes it more difficult because here we are okay uh, um anyone else have any questions for mark we've jumped around a little bit it was my fault my head was buzzing around somewhere um, anyone have any other questions for Mark? You'll let us know what happens um, on the, the um, CRF eligible, you know, the, the I, I don't know, I try to avoid using the word clawback, but that's basically what we're talking about, whether, um, whether they'll be, um, whether we'll get over this particular bump. We will. Okay. And, um, so if nobody else has any questions, I think we're gonna have a little bit of a break before we go on the floor at 10, um, because I think we're done. Sam, I don't know whether you had a chance to look at the draft, but you'll get in touch with Robin and Abby if you wanna add your name to that. Okay. Okay. Um, and Robin, you have everything that you need from us, but you need help from the clerk's office to know how to proceed with it. Is that right? Uh, I think so. Once I have, uh, once I chat with Sam, I'll know whether to, we need to add his name and then I'll send that off to the clerk and figure out what we're supposed to do from there. Okay. Very good. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, I just don't know very much ahead of time what work we have to do. So, um, so hold the time tomorrow. Um, and if we don't need it, I'll let you know as early as early as I can. Um, I'll let you know one way or the other as early as I can. That sometimes some, something may end up in our committee. Possible we'll have to regroup at some point today, in which case just be prepared. George and Bill. Um, so do we, you wanna hold it 8.30 tomorrow morning or nine? I think it's nine tomorrow. Is that right, Sorsha? Um, I, I have 830. 830. Um, Hold because you guys are on the floor at 10. So depending on what. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hold at 830. And then um, if it's something small, we'll do it at nine. Um, and I had another question. Was that the same question, Bill? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Good.